G'day guys, Galvin, Cartoon Company in New Zealand. I've got my trusty test UCF20, LS400 here, this one. So you can see it's got a big cover across the top, it indicates uh, non-VVTi UCF20. And we're going to do a little bit of diagnostic work on it. I use it to test computers after we've had them rebuilt. And I've got this computer that's been sent to me. It hasn't been rebuilt. It's got issues. It won't start the car that it's in. And the number's a little bit different. It's not one that I know off the top of my head. It's uh, 89661 50320. And we actually suggest that it's got an immobilizer fault in that ECU. But I'm going to plug it into this car and see if it works. Being that it's our test car, we want to check first that it actually does run properly. Um, and we have an engine check light. So let's get in and check that first. I have my split pin. And I'm going to bridge the diagnostic connector. So I get down here. I head under here and there's a diagnostic box. Okay, and I'm going to bridge T E1, which is uh, and E1. E1 is just an earth. Okay, so that's I'm grounding T E1. So T E1 is in this corner. It's really hard to see. There and there. So make sure we get it in the right hole. We've bridged T E1 and E1. And we've now got a tech light that is flashing. So we count those flashes. Uh, let's just let it see it. Okay. So we're going to go with, here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. So that's 24. One, two, three. One, 31. Okay, so 31 and 24, if we grab the uh, sheet of codes on OBD1, it comes up with airflow meter and air temp sensor, which probably means that we haven't plugged the airflow meter in in this car. At the same time, you see we've got ECT flashing. Remove that. Now, it is possible to also check on the engine. Let's go show. Uh, yes, diagnosis is connect, correct. Uh, we, we were testing airflow meters the other day. Right, there is a second diagnostic box. So uh, the one inside is DLC2, is DLC1. It's about there, eh? Green is about there. Can't get my split pin in. Cover, go on. 10 mil. If we come over here, we're going to clear the fault codes. Now, there's a lot of talk about this. Guys say you need to pull it, leave it overnight, blah, blah, blah. They're wrong. Okay, it's 10 seconds for the EFI fuse. The EFI main. EFI number one, right there. There's a 20 amp, right there. You can also unplug the ECU on the 28 pin plug or the main power supply, these supplies, disconnecting the negative of the battery, or well, the battery will also do the same job, so that's codes gone, uh, so this applies to Sauras, Celsius, SC400s, actually all, pretty much all Toyotas of this era, before they got OBD2. Diagnosis box, DLC1. Bloody rats. America, they suffer from rats a lot, eh, too? True. Yeah. What attracts them so much? It's nice and warm, or it's dry. TE1 and E1. So on this box, it's, it's this one here. It has a little diagram on the top, or you can Google the the layout of DLC1. 
Oh, uh, ini guys. E1, TE1. Okay, key on. And we've got it flashing, so we've cleared that code. Shay, yep. can you set me a code, please? Sure. So we just uh, unplug the airflow meter and we'll watch these. There it goes. See, there's the code 24, which is the air temp sensor. And then there will be a 31, which is the airflow meter. Okay, unplug it. I mean, plug it back in and then clear the, clear the code. Right, so a good way... No, no, no. So in this case, that battery's still got enough residual voltage, even though it's a bit flat. Yep, EFI 2, oh, EFI 1, sorry. EFI 1, yep, oh, you're in that one, at 20 amp. 10 seconds. You're good, plug it back in. You're good. I was only at 7. So... Another way, if you're wanting to check an engine like this, or check whether a computer's functioning correctly, you actually set some codes. Uh, and you can do it with several different codes. Now this one, it did actually start and run with the airflow meter off. It just, it idled low, running poor, and black smoke out the back. And we're all clear. Okay, so. Car starts and runs. Does what it should. Right, let's plug that, uh, that other ECU. So I have gone into Toyo DIY. I've plugged it in. It's a Euro spec ECU. So there are some pinout differences to this car, but I think it stood. It would normally still run it. Okay, there may be some faults, but it should normally run it. ECU is located in behind the glove box, right here. Easy to unplug. Um, guys, go. You have to unplug batteries. Uh, well, the battery powered the ECU is in that plug. So if you if you can only access the ECU for clearing codes, it's, it's the 28 pin in this car. Other ones, okay, can be different. Uh, wrong hole. I have to lift it up. So this ECU is in. It's the uh, 50320. What's 50 of the chest of the ECU number? Shay, 89661 is electrical plug. Like all ECU units. Yep, control units. Yes, 50 is Pass. chassis number of the car. So LS400s and Celsius. So I know it's an LS400 or a Celsius. Okay. actually a Lexus this is actually a this is actually an LS 400 it's not a Celsius it's a proper one I'm gonna check like the diagnostic thing is still bridged but there's no flashing eh? there is a chance that this is actually an OBD2 ECU it won't be doing any damage but it certainly, it, let's see if we start. It doesn't. Okay, so it doesn't go. The engine doesn't start. We know there's a problem with that ECU. Um, it still should have gone into this car and it still should have started, or at least attempted to start. It's doing nothing of that sort. Um, I'm going to ring the customer, he's a mate of mine, so we'll have a chat with him. Right, we'll talk to you soon, we'll see what we come up with. But I hope um, actually showing how to check those diagnostic codes is helpful. Uh, I can also use my scan tool. So DLC2, the one in the cabin, so there's the correct plug, that does plug in. Okay, so people tell me OBD1, you can't get a scan tool, it's, it's crap. You definitely can, I've got one, job done. And if you ever get a mechanic and they come out and they try to plug into this one, just have a real quick look 
Um, <coughs> VF1. So here's W for check engine. Well, it's not present. Okay, so the scan tool won't read that. Is VF1. So if it does ever connect, you're going to get the wrong data. Okay, on most models. UCF20, absolutely, it'll be scrambled gibberish. Okay, so if the mechanic comes out and plugs into this one, do question him because it's the one inside the cabin for the scan tool. Right, let me see what I can solve on this. Now guys, um, the easy number here is 89661-50252, okay? So that's the, this is the one in this car. This is a US domestic market uh, LS400 50230, and this is OBD2. Uh, I'm sure that one is OBD2. It's just, so it's a completely different number. And guys, so you can't interchange them. Watch this. It's running, okay? Completely different number, it runs. I could plug a JDM Celsius in there, it would run. This is where the fun part comes when it's got a different color plug, okay? Um, chances are I could make that one go as well though. I've done a video on those ones, um, interchanging pins to make them work, okay? But US, LS400, into a, into a JDM. Oh, I think this is a JDM spec. Or it's a general. When I, when I talked to the customer on this job, he suggested it's been giving out a code 99. And this doesn't doesn't quite compute right with me. Um, so normally, the emo versions have got the white plug, but not all of the white ones have emo. But that's what I normally see, like this one. This one's had a box, but did you see the extra wires? See those wires going in there, those ones? Yeah. That's for the emo stuff. So I fitted an emo bypass. This is the one out of the, that I was sent to me to test. Um, I found a, a little piece of repair in one little spot. Oh, I'm on an angle, eh? Which is in, in here. But on the other side, down in here, we'll get a close on photo. Um, the legs off that I see are buggered. Absolutely stuffed. Okay, they're falling a bit. So I don't actually think this is a case of a mobilizer fault. I think this is a case of a totally stuffed ECU. But I thought I'd just add that update in because uh, I'm going to call this one done. It was more about reading those codes, but it, it was to do with this job as well. Kind of, kind of worked together. So, uh, real quick, guys. Plugged a white plug ECU into a grey plug car. Watch this. That's... Woo! Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it actually can be made to work swapping some pins, but that's in another video. But you can interchange different ECUs on these. You can interchange different numbers if you know what you're doing. US, UK, JDM, there's things like hydraulic fan pumps. Um, viscous fans on the LS 400s, few differences in there, the overdrive, there are some little differences within them, but you, you can make them work if you know what you're doing, okay? It's a matter of knowing which ones you can and can't interchange. Again, it wasn't the purpose of this video, it was to diagnose that ECU, which is buggered. That's going off to be fixed and repaired, we'll put that on the repair list. Um, and actually, I don't know whether that one can be repaired, it's a Pretty serious issue. Uh, I thought I'd so. Do it again soon. Catch up. All right, guys. I thought I'd do a little bit of an update on this job. We uh, assembled a whole lot of ECUs and uh, looked at the the repair job on them. And so I had two that were sent down to me. Uh, the one that had the big burn mark in it and the, on the component on the corner. Uh, that one was stuffed. We threw that one away. Uh, the, the fluid from the cap had actually eaten the leg of that chip in the corner away. 
So that went in the bin. The other one that the caps came out of, that it had no caps in it, literally had, had no capacitors left in it. The actual ECU was really clean and tidy. So what we did there is we put a set of caps back in it. And um, as a backup plan, I sent a known tested running ECU. It was, it was this one. Uh, tested and goes, but needs service. It came back with a little... The, my repair tech actually put a little note on here. In a very sad state. Surprised it actually works. Hmm. So if we actually get in here, and, and this one I've used on another job just as a test ECU, and, and when it was replaced with a service ECU, the person who was doing that, which happens to be my office lady's husband and a good mate of mine, said, well, it goes heaps better on the new ECU. This one's actually all corroded all down here. Hopefully we can see that. And actually under this board, under the, the heater plug, uh, there's a bit of corrosion starting on that cap. So this one, like this whole area of the board here, like right at right here, right around, here's just toasted. So we made the call not to give that a try. Um, it's going to stay as my test ECU. And this one got a new set of caps on it. Um, also note the number, 320. I'm really quite fortunate I happen to have a UCF20 test car, like we, as you've seen in the video. So we, we went down to fire it up, and it gets a hiding, that car gets a hiding, so it needed some new spark plugs because it had fouled up. But we plugged the Hex Lab one in, and it didn't go. Uh, but it went like this, went... <coughs> like the timing was out. And what Toyota did is they swapped the ignition triggers around on some of the later model ones so you couldn't it was more in the immobilized ones this one doesn't have an immobilizer in it we checked that because i thought that could have been an issue but it wasn't but to stop you putting a normal ecu into some of those cars they changed the ignition triggers around but the rest of the pinouts really similar like all the engine side of stuff is is um interchangeable that's fine um but they change the ignition triggers around, which changes the, the position of the timing, which causes problems. So I um, just flick the ignition triggers around, and we fired it up, and it runs absolutely beautiful. So the customer will get back one of his ECUs in a working condition rebuilt that was meant for that car and is the right part number for the car, which is ideal. I've got no problem changing ECU part numbers, but I'm aware of the, the, the other problems that it can have, so... Um, or the other little changes, the little little bits and pieces. Uh, the one I would have chosen, we would have had to swap the ignition triggers to the other way. And um, it would have had a fault code for a hydraulic fan. But really good result. I'm happy as. Uh, the customer will be getting an ECU back and his car will be back on the road working. And I know it's working because, well, I know the ECU works because it works fine in my car. So that's been helpful. We'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.